markets were uh, welcoming what um, the Chancellor uh, did. So it, it seems that they are happy to comment uh, when they think things are going well and, and less happy to comment uh, when things are going less well. What we need to hear from the government is a credible plan for the public finances and, uh, and, and a credible plan to grow the economy. And it is because we got neither of those on Friday that markets have reacted in the way that they have, both on Friday. And look, I think that many people hoped that over the weekend and as we got on to Monday trading, that things would stabilise. That hasn't happened so far. And the pound is now at an all-time low against the dollar. That is very concerning because what it means is that uh, the things that are priced in, in dollars, gas and oil, but also other things, will go up in price, adding to the inflationary pressures and the pressure on the cost of living here in the UK. But it's also pushing up government borrowing costs, which means more government spending will go in servicing the debt. And that will in turn mean higher borrowing costs for ordinary families in Britain through their mortgage rates and elsewhere. So this is a serious situation, a cause for concern. I started my career at the Bank of England and I've got to say I have never seen anything like this before. And the Chancellor, instead of doubling down uh, at the weekend on his position on, on Friday, uh, needs to now set out credible plans. Um, yeah, but there are key parts of the budget, aren't there, that you uh, agree with, such as the uh, reversal of the national insurance increase and the cut in the basic rate uh, of income tax. It, it must be pretty tricky being uh, the party in opposition when there are uh, storm, storm uh, busters like that that people really uh, welcome. We support, of course, support for ordinary working people, those people on modest and middle incomes. You'll remember that uh, we opposed the increase in national insurance contributions when it was first uh, proposed. Uh, we voted against it uh, and we said that when it came in in April, it was the wrong tax at the wrong time. Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng voted for those increases in national insurance that they are now rightly uh, reversing. And for similar reasons, we support the cut in the basic rate of tax from 20p to 19p because the truth is ordinary working people on modest and middle incomes are struggling at the moment with the rising costs of energy, with the rising costs of the food shop and wages not keeping up. And so while we support those measures, the targeted measures to help people on those modest and middle incomes, I do oppose the cuts in taxes for the very wealthiest in society. I think it is grossly unfair to be cutting taxes for people earning more than £150,000 a year, a tax cut that means that somebody earning a million pounds a year would get £50,000 every year uh, in lower taxes at a time when it is people at the bottom and in the middle who are struggling most with the rising cost of living. This yeah, idea I, that trickle-down sure. economics, that somehow giving more to people at the top is going to help everybody else, hasn't worked in the past. I don't believe it will work today. I did put that to the minister and made the point that it was um, £53,000 was uh, 53 years of uh, universal credit uh, uplift, which the government has taken away. She didn't accept that as an argument. Um, but national insurance, um, that, that cut, um, which you support, where will the money come from, even when you're in government, for the NHS? Because that's what it was supposed to be used for. Well, I listened to what the Chancellor said in the statement on Friday, and he said very clearly that it wouldn't affect the money that was going into the National Health Service. And that's what we've said all along, um, that the National Health Service should be uh, funded, but not through, uh, not on the backs of higher taxes on ordinary working people. I want a fairer tax system. That's why, for example, I've said that there should be an extension of the windfall tax on the enormous profits that energy giants are making at the moment. Because right now we've, we've got a situation where because of Putin's war on Ukraine, everybody is facing higher energy bills, but the energy giants are making unimaginable profits. And the government are leaving that on the table, putting all of the costs of their energy package on current and future uh, taxpayers. 
That is not the right approach when we have already got so much government debt and so much government borrowing. We need to put our public finances on a sustainable footing, but we also need our public services on a sustainable footing because economic growth also requires having young people leaving school and college with the skills needed for the world of work. It requires having doctors and nurses keeping people fit and well so that they can uh, work. And we've seen in the last few years people drop out of the labour market because of uh, illness and long-term conditions and so further cuts to our health and our education budgets we would oppose because you need strong public uh, services for a growing economy too. You brought up energy bills there the government says that it's capped at two and a half thousand pounds for uh, two years from what we've heard from you guys um, you're only talking um, about uh, help for six months what would you do after that if you were in power? Well, we set out a package of measures before the government had measures for any period of time. We set that out in August because we felt that energy customers needed to have that reassurance that, that help was coming and it would have come under um, a, a Labour government sooner. Um, we set out a six-month fully funded and fully costed um, uh, package and we said that um, more might be needed and we would look at the situation in April. We welcome the fact that the government has now acted. We support the... Uh, the package they've put in place. The dividing line now, though, is who pays for that package of measures. Because under the government's proposals, it is current and future taxpayers that will have to pay back um, this money uh, in the years to come. While under Labour's um, proposals, we would have extended the windfall tax on those big profits being made by the energy giants, rather than putting all of this on more borrowing and more debt that in the end has to be paid back. So, just to clarify, um, you support the government's uh, two-year cap at £2,500 on energy bills? Well, we think there should be a proper freeze in energy bills. That was our proposal, not an increase at in the cap, but a freeze. Pounds. We also said... No, so at the moment, prices are £1,971 on average per year. We would have frozen yeah. bills at that level rather than allowing them to go to £2,500. And we also said that people on prepayment metres shouldn't be paying a premium um, when they are some, usually some of the poorest people in society. But we do support the energy package. We would uh, do a little bit more on that front, as I've said. But the big dividing line on this is about who pays for it. And under Labour, we would ask the energy giants to make more of a contribution, not just whacking it on government borrowing and government debt. Dockers are on strike in Liverpool at the moment. On Friday, the Chancellor announced plans to diminish the powers of unions to be able to strike. What do you think? The best thing that Labour can do to help striking workers is to get a Labour government. And I understand why working people are taking industrial action. They're seeing their wages not increase with the rising cost of living. They're seeing inflation spiral out of control. And they're worried about how their families are going to get through the next few months when their wages aren't keeping up with the rising cost of living. It's why we need to get a grip of inflation. And the bonfire of workers' rights and the... Uh, uh, the, the greater restrictions on trade unions' right to organise, that is not the right way to deal with this. The right way to deal with this is to sit down with trade unions and working people and work out what is a fair and affordable deal. We didn't have industrial action like this when Labour was last in government because we treated working people with respect. Now, this government seems to want to blame working people for the challenges that we see in our economy at the moment okay. when the real people to blame for those challenges is this Conservative government. A couple of other thoughts before I let you go. Thank you for giving us the time. The RMT chief at McLynch says Thank Sir Keir Starmer must cosy up to working-class people. Does that mean you are joining the Dockers on the picket line later on? As I said, Kate, the best way that the Labour Party can support working people is to get a Labour government. And that's why at conference today I'll be setting out Labour's plans to get good jobs and investment here in Britain. The jobs here, the factories here, through investment in the industries of the future, like electric vehicles, offshore wind, green steel, a hydrogen have. technology. That is the way to support working people, to get a Labour sure. government. And after but 12 and a half years line? in opposition, that is what I'm determined to do. I'm yeah, not going to go on the picket, picket line. line. I'm going to set out Labour's... 
I'm not going to go on the picket line. I'm going to be setting out today on our conference floor the plans that Labour have to support working people right across this country. That is the way to help working people to get a Labour government. And as I say, Kay, I am sick of opposition. I want to be not the shadow chancellor, but the chancellor of the Exchequer, actually able to fix some of these problems in our economy today. Final thought. You're in Andy Burnham's manor at the moment, of course, North West England. Um, he says he hasn't ruled out returning to Westminster. Would you support him as Labour leader? Well, Keir Starmer is the leader of the Labour Party. Not my question. And I'm really proud to serve as his shadow chancellor. But we don't have a vacancy for leader of the Labour Party. Keir Starmer is leader of the Labour Party. I've never felt as optimistic about the future for Labour in the 12 and a half years as I've been an MP, as I am today under Keir's leadership. I, I think that when people look at the Conservatives and the direction that they are taking us in, and they look at the alternative provided by Labour, and you'll hear more of that in my speech today and Keir's speech uh, tomorrow, that Labour are winning the battle uh, of ideas finally, and I, um, and, and I am confident that at the next election we can persuade people who have left Labour in recent years to come back uh, to Labour. Andy is a brilliant mayor uh, and, uh, and, and, and I work closely with him, but we've got a great leader of the Labour Party today okay. in Keir Starmer. It, OK, it's good. I thought it was worth asking. It's good to talk to you. Um, I look forward to catching up with you a bit later Andy on in the